The practice used to be, and in many places still is, that the card dealer in a game of poker held an object called a buck. This was to indicate that he was the recognized distributor of the cards. When he lost the privilege of dealing, he gave the object, or buck, to the next dealer, and thus the term passing the buck came into English idiom. It meant passing off responsibility for a deed to someone else. Long ago, the Christian apostle Paul touched on the very human tendency of not wanting to shoulder responsibility when he wrote, but let him prove what his own work is, and then he will have cause for exaltation in regard to himself alone, and not in comparison with the other person, for each one will carry his own load. Say, Chuck, you didn't print these letterheads blue instead of red, did you? I showed you the job order, Clint. It was you that gave me the ink. I only made do with what I had. Yeah, but Chuck, you know Anderson and Company always prints its letterhead at number 17 red. Look, when I asked you for the ink, I took what you gave me. If it's wrong, it's not my fault. But you only asked me. Oh, what's the use? All I've got to say is Mr. Goodman is gonna hit the roof when he sees this. He doesn't have to see it. It'll be in the waste barrel and in the dump before he knows it ever happened. What about you? How are you going to explain to Joe Summers why you've got to get more of that special watermarked bond? Look, Clint, you're the guy that gave me the ink. As far as I can see, you're the one who's going to have to do all the explaining. I don't know what's happening with you, Chuck. This makes the fourth time in a month. I can't afford to be throwing away every other job like this. But, Mr. Goodman, it's not my fault. I asked Clint Amory for the ink. He's the one who gave me the wrong color. He gave you the wrong color. Who is supposed to be printing those Anderson letterheads? Amory or you? Well, me, of course. Then why couldn't you take the trouble to read the color specifications and print it right? I did, but Amory... Amory nothing. It wasn't Amory's job in the first place. It was yours. And if you can't even be responsible for the ink color on a letterhead, what can you be responsible for? Mr. Goodman, I always try to be careful, but I can't help Your it... Your being careful almost cost me a press and nearly got Pete Garbowski fired once. Yes, but that was then. I'm I... telling you this, Chuck. You'd better show some improvement in the next two weeks. Otherwise, you're going to force me to take stricter measures with you. But, Mr. Goodman, it's not my That's fault. That's enough. Now go back to your press. I... Oh, all right. Shop office, Summers. Say, Joe, can you come up a few minutes? Sure, Harry, be right up. What's up, Harry? It's Chuck Nelson again. The Anderson and Company letterheads? And the college brochures, and 50,000 shopping center flyers. Joe, that boy is costing me too much money. I've talked to him before, Harry, but we both know he has a lot to learn. But not with my money. Did you fire him? No, I gave him one last chance, though. If he doesn't improve within two weeks, and I mean radically improve, Joe, I want you to get rid of him. Well, did you already let him know? I laid it right on the line. I'll say one thing, though. He's not a bad printer. If he'd just learned to be responsible about his mistakes, you've got to see a mistake before you can correct a mistake. Okay, Harry. We'll see what happens in two weeks. I hate to take you off your press like this, Chuck, but I've been concerned about you. You mean what's been going on with my work? Well, frankly, I am concerned more with what's going on with you. It uh, seems like it's reflecting on your work. Now look, Joe, I know some things have happened, but they can be explained. Oh, I figure they probably could. I mean, you've always been a fine printer for us. Thanks, Joe. But you have been having your problems recently. I know it looks bad, Joe, but those letterheads that I got botched up this morning, it wasn't really my fault. But it was a problem, wasn't it, Chuck? Well, of course it was, but... And uh, you were involved in it, weren't you? Sure, Joe, but still, like I explained before, if Amory had just given me the right ink... I mean, you're the one who made Amory responsible for ink distribution. Perhaps that's true, yet uh, didn't the job order have the ink designation? It always does. And I showed it to Clint, and he gave... I know. 
He told me he may have been responsible for giving you the wrong ink. It could be he read B when he should have read R. You see what I'm saying? He just as good as did it. From one viewpoint, you might say that, Chuck. But uh, from another angle, whose job was it, Clint's or yours? Well, mine, but... Well, let's not worry about it for a few minutes, Chuck. There's no sense in getting disturbed about something if it can be fixed up. I'm glad you feel that way, Joe. At least you're reasonable. Well, I figure you have to be if you want to get a problem settled. I sometimes think about one of the most unreasonable types of men I ever knew of. The idea of him kind of makes me be careful when it comes to taking responsibility. <laughs> Who's that? Clint Avery? No, he's not the one I had in mind. It was someone named Adam. Adam? Adam who? Oh, you mean the Adam and Eve thing. That's right. You remember it, don't you? That was where a snake was talking in a tree to Eve and he made her eat an apple. Well, that's kind of an outline of it. Only the Bible doesn't say what the fruit was. It just says God told Adam and Eve not to eat it. That's funny. I always thought it was an apple. I tell you what. I keep a Bible here on my desk. Uh, why don't you take a look for yourself? Uh, first of all, remember that uh, God had told Adam not to eat that fruit. And then Adam had told Eve. Now, who do you think would be in charge? Who was that? Well, if God had told Adam not to eat first and uh, directly, uh, who do you think would be the one responsible? Adam? That's right. Now read how he accepted his responsibility for what went wrong. Here in Genesis 3.12. Right here. Yes, that's it. And the man went on to say, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and so I ate it. Now notice what Adam's defense was. The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit. So? So who did Adam say was responsible for his refusing to obey God? The woman whom you gave me. Why, he said God gave him the woman, so it was God's fault. And Adam also said, she gave me fruit. So he was passing the buck to his wife and to God. Now what do you think of that? <laughs> Sounds ridiculous. I mean, why blame God or his wife? He didn't have to eat the fruit if he didn't want to. Now see what I mean about being unreasonable? He couldn't take the responsibility for what really was his responsibility. You know, that's one thing I really believe in, Joe. A man has to stand up for what he does, right or wrong. And if he's wrong, he should admit it and take whatever's coming to him. I'm glad to see you feel that way about it, Chuck. Now that kind of spirit will help you see yourself as you really are. If you need improvement, you'll know how to make it. And if you make a mistake, you'll take the blame. You're right there. Well, if that's all, you mind if I go now? It's close to quitting time, and I've got to wash down my press. Go ahead. Now, do a good job, and I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, see you, Joe. Hello, honey. Hello, Chuck. Hard day today? Kind of. It seems like everybody over there is on my back. Poor Chuck. What is it, darling? Things have been going wrong. Well, today, for one thing, I gave Clint Amory my color order, and he gave me the wrong ink. The whole job was wrecked, and Mr. Goodman blamed me. Well, I'm sure you'll make it right from now on. When he sees what kind of work you really produce... It's not so easy as that, Judy. He's given me two weeks, or else. Oh. Well, don't worry about it now, dear. You're home, and I've got some lamb chops I cooked up. I used a Greek recipe I read in the paper. You'll just love them. Oh, all right. We might as well eat. I've got to say, you're maybe the world's greatest cook. <laughs> and you are about the world's smoothest talker. Having you makes all the difference in the world. Why, Harry Goodman, he can fly out the window for all I care. Don't talk that way, Chuck. You know you have a good job there. You're right. Say, uh, what's this here? I don't know. It came in the mail with your name on it, so I didn't open it. It's from the Motor Vehicle Bureau. The car's registration expired at the end of the month. There's still time for that tomorrow. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, honey. Why didn't you tell me the car's registration was due? But I didn't know until just now, Chuck. Well, don't you think you should take a little more interest, darling? It isn't that I'm not interested, Chuck. I just didn't know. But you saw the mail. Your name was on the envelope. I... I don't open your letters. But we have to share the responsibility. I agree. But it was your car and your mail. 
I didn't want to interfere. You're supposed to be the head of the house. That's all very fine and good, but how can I remember everything if you don't... What's the matter, Chuck? It's not really the registration, is it? No. No, I guess it isn't. Well, what is it? Is it something I did, or are you still worried about the plant? Maybe it's a little bit of both. I don't know. It's, it's just that you've got to learn to be more responsible about little things, just like Clint Amory. You're not saying I'm like Clint. Oh, no, nothing like that at all. It's just that, well, Joe Summers was telling me something very interesting before quitting time, and it would have done you and Clint a lot of good. I'd be glad to hear it. It's all about Adam and Eve. Eating apples? Don't be smart, Judy. Besides, it wasn't apples. It was just a fruit they weren't supposed to eat. Okay, then what? Then they ate it. Well, Adam was the one responsible, but the first thing he did was blame God, and then his wife for going wrong. What else did Joe say? Can you imagine that? Adam blamed God for something he was responsible for, and then tried to blame his wife to boot. That takes nerve. I agree a hundred percent, but what's the point of it all? Don't you see, honey? That one man had the responsibility. When he fell down on it, he immediately tried to blame it on someone else, on his wife. Oh, no. Chuck. I'm so sorry, honey. I was just doing the same thing. That's exactly what Joe was trying to tell me. I didn't mean to blame you. I guess I've been letting myself get carried away. Don't even think about it, Chuck. You've had a hard day all day. But I shouldn't take it out on you. Say, why don't we just forget the whole thing and we'll have some dessert? Great. It'll only take a minute. You wait right here and I'll go get it. Boy, I must be dense sometimes. I, I think I finally see something that's been dangling in front of my eyes for months. Say, Joe, can you spare a minute? Sure, Chuck. Pull up a chair and sit down. I guess my two weeks are about up today. Your two weeks? You know, Joe, Mr. Goodman said either I make the grade in two weeks or I get out. Oh, that's true. Well, I thought I'd better check with you and see if tomorrow was really the last paycheck. I don't think it is, Chuck. You don't? No, I don't. I was talking to Mr. Goodman this morning about it. He's been happy with the way you've been handling yourself recently. Thanks, Joe. I'm really glad to hear that. It seems like you're better up to shouldering your responsibilities. Well, Joe, it has to do with when you were telling me what the Bible said about Adam. And I told you how I thought a man should take responsibility for whatever he's done, right or wrong. And, very frankly... I wasn't doing it. Maybe you've got it down then. What's that? Well, just what the Bible says. Each one must carry his own load. <laughs> Whether producing on a job, paying taxes to a government, or taking care of his own health, every person must eventually face up to his own responsibilities. A firm grounding and an accurate knowledge of the Bible is a sure source of strength for accomplishing this. The program, All Scripture is Beneficial, is produced by the Watchtower Society and presented by Jehovah's Witnesses.